So today, we will have three sections. First section is from Nanogen Solutions. The title is an introduction to PEZ cloning technology. The speaker is me. Um, for the second and the third section, the speaker are Dr. Patrick and Dr. Michelle, respectively. So, all right. So welcome again, everyone. And thanks for coming in and joining us. My name is Kogwime from Nanogen Solution. I will be the first speaker of, first speaker of today. Okay. So this is my topic, an introduction to PEZ cloning. So here, a quick outline to PEZ cloning technology on what I will be covering today is the first, I will be talk about the traditional cloning method and also its limitation. Secondly, I will share how the topo isomerase system to overcome the traditional cloning limitation. Thirdly, I will share some advantage of PEZ cloning platform. And lastly, also sharing some tips for cloning with your all. All right, let us start on the traditional cloning. So traditional cloning usually refer to the use of same RE to generate the DNA fragment with specific complementary end sequence that can be joined together with DNA ligase before the transformation. So next we will go to some step-by-step overview. So of course, we need to doing the traditional molecular cloning. We need to isolate the DNA. We have both the gene of interest and also our vector. And then we need to insert the gene of interest into the plasmid. So we need to cut both DNA with the same RE and then mix them together. After that, adding the T4 DNA ligase to bond them covalently. And then, the circular plasmid is very important because the only the circular plasmid can be transformed into the bacteria. Hence, we can using the blue screening to, by using the antibiotic and also excarplate. After that, we can identify the clone by using PCR product, by using PCR. Next, I will share to you the limitation of traditional cloning. So what is the problem? Okay, a standard ligation is a trimolecular reaction. What are trimolecular reaction? What, what are they? So we have three molecules, which means the first molecule of course, it's our gene of interest. The second molecule is the vector. And the third molecule is the T4 DNA ligase. The higher the DNA like the higher ratio DNA ligase to the, the sorry, the higher the ratio of DNA to ligase concentration, the higher the efficiency. But higher ratio of DNA to ligase concentration prefer intermolecular joining to form contactomer. Usually, the desired circulation clone are less than 0.1% of the product. So, I will talk about how the topo isomerase system to overcome the limitation. So firstly, I will share some theory of topo isomerase with you all first. So topo isomerase 1 is extracted from the vaccina virus and naturally, this topo isomerase 1 has a rules to cleave and rejoin the DNA to facilitate the replication. So this unique part of topo isomerase 1 is specifically recognize the DNA sequence 5.n 
C O T C C T T. So, vaccina topo isomerase can be used as a cloning tool. So, these are the two journal paper by Suman. So, they are found that the topo isomerase one can be used to cleave and also binding the DNA. After four years, they are using the topo isomerase one as a cloning tool. So we can use the vaccina virus topo isomerase one as a, as a cloning tool with the combined with vector. So here are some characteristics of topo enzyme. It has the 340 amino acid, specific DNA clearing and binding at the three, the five right end, C or D, C, C, D, D. Next, it has the nicking enzyme and ligase function. And it also can be used in rough buffer condition. It also does not require the outside energy. Lastly, more than 80% of ligation reaction can be finished within two minutes. So, just now I said, for the traditional cloning method, we are involved three molecules, which means it's trimolecular. But for the topo isomerase cloning vector, only bimolecular, which means only two molecules. They are our gene of interest, and also the vector with the topo isomerase. So, the topo isomerase can be used instead of ligase for ligation. And also the cloning may be done more rapidly without the need of RE. In this, the topo cloning method is linearly vector, is activated by attaching the topo isomerase one to its end. And then this topo activate vector may be accept the PCR product by ligation to both of the 5 prime end of the PCR product. The topo isomerase is released and a circulation vector is formed in this process. So when ligation, of, which means that when ligation occur, the 5 prime end of hydroxyl of PCR product will attack the phosphate bone and the topo isomerase detach. So the ATP is formed to use for ligation. So without the T4 DNA ligase, the ligation also can be done. This slide is to show how the topo isomerase, uh, topo isomerase system simplified the traditional cloning process. So most of the time, we need using the purified DNA product, but if we are using the topo isomerase system, no need purified DNA, just only your gene of interest, mixed with the vector, and then does not require the RE site to cut both. You just mix them together, and then the ligation will be forming due to the topo, and then circular plasmid is formed after that at the same step, going to transformation and then screening, identify the clone by PCR. Okay, next I will share the PEZ cloning platform with you all. So these are the three simple steps of PEZ cloning vector. So actually, PEZ cloning is you is used PEZ cloning kit is used the topo system. So of course, when we want to start the cloning, we need to prepare our gene of interest. Okay. So first step, 
of this cloning, PEZ cloning is we have to mix our topo vector and also the PCR together into a tube. The second step, incubate them five minutes at room temperature. Third step, transformation, doing the transformation. So just three simple steps, you can done the cloning. So here are the four major advantage of PEG cloning system. First one, simple. Like how simple it is? We just need to mix the vector and also the gene of interest. So no purification step is required for the DNA product. Second, save our time. Due to the characteristic of the topo enzyme, only five minute incubation time is required. Third, efficiency. Because of the bimolecular reaction, no concatenamer will be formed and the circular plasmid for high efficiency, for high cloning efficiency. Lastly, it is resistant. So the competent cell trans1, t1 will be given free of charge together with the PEG cloning kit and this competent cell is resistant to T1 and T5 fudge. So just now I say most of the time by using the PEZ cloning kit, no purification step required for the gene of interest for our DNA product. So if really have something like the non-specific amplification and primer dimer, so for the non-specific amplification, we can using the gel extraction kit. And then for the primer dimer, we can using the PCR purification kit before the ligation occur. So mm, this slide will be share the journal paper by using the PEZ cloning kit before. So actually it's more than 200 citations in high IF journal, but due to the space, okay, we I just giving some of them for you. So like for number four, in the natural biotechnology, the IF is up to 39, okay, by using this kit. So it's a very, very high IF. Next, I will introduce the types of vector in PED cloning system. So first type is the T overhang vector. Is the TA tailing, which known as the sticky end. Okay, here the sticky end. And then we have three types of the T overhang vector. They are PEZ T1, PEZ T1 simple, PEZ T3. They are different, it's just the RE side, different RE side. All right. So going to the second types of vector is blunt cloning vector. So the, just now that one is the sticky end. Here is the blunt end. We have the PEZ blunt, PEZ blunt simple, and PEZ blunt three. They are different also is the RE side are different. So this blunt EZ vector is designed for cloning and the sequencing PFU amplified PCR product. Well, for just now, the T overhang vector is designed for the tech PCR product. Okay, blunt is designed for the PFU amplified PCR product. All right, so next, I will talk about a more advanced cloning vector is a zero breakdown cloning vector. So what is zero breakdown cloning vector? So both zero breakdown cloning vector, so also the same, we have the sticky and we call as T50 and blunt and blunt zero. Both of them contain a suicide gene. So the 
express due to expression of this gene. If the cell that is non-recombinant vector, they are they will kill themselves. So when have the PCR fragment insert and disrupt it, disrupt this expression of this gene, which means it can be survived, all right. And without the PCR fragment to disrupt the this suicide gene, they will kill themselves. So this one, this kit, zero breakout cloning kit, they are more simple, more fast, more efficiency, positive rate, close to 100%. And also blue-white screening is required. So these vectors are suitable for the large fragment cloning, like up to 10 kb fragment is work. Next, I will talk about the competent cell that coming together with the PEZ cloning system, trans one T1. So beside that, just now I mentioned, resistant to T1 and T5 fraction, it also has the high transformation efficiency that more than 10 power of 9 CFU per microgram of the PAP19 DNA, and it's also fast, fast growing. The doubling time is only about 50 minutes and the clonony are visible in eight to nine hours. So which means the next morning, you can see your colony form. All right, so beside this one, we also have different, different types of strain of competent cell that have different application. So lastly, I will share some tips for the cloning. So from the transgene scientists, they are discovered the problem of the low clone, low clone efficient. So here are some questions that, that found, there are some problems they found out. Okay, first one is the competent cell. Why? Because competent cell is a very um, fragile, the cell is very fragile, so they suggest avoid the repeated towing cell, which means cannot like towing the cell frozen again, towing a cell frozen, towing frozen. Okay, so this step, no, no. So cannot doing this step. And then next, we need to prepare the, we avoid pipetting the cell vigorously. So we have to gentle handling them for the entire progress. Secondly, PCR product. Why? Due to the thermodynamic instability of 3 pi MA. So they suggest use the fresh PCR product and does not freeze the PCR product. Okay? So we have Actually, the PCR product should be stored at 4 degrees instead of we need to freeze them. And the cloning reaction need to be finished within one or two days. So, in the preparation of the PCR product, we, in order to ensure the integrity of the amplification product, actually, 10 to 20 minutes of the post extension step at the 72 degrees Celsius is required. Okay. And then once again, we need to remind the PEZTA, which means the sticky end is suitable for only the tech PCR product. And then the PEZ blunt vector is suitable for the PFU product. Thirdly, I will share the Pro, uh, the problem is the DNA concentration. The low DNA concentration will reduce the probability of collision of bimolecular. So, how to improve it is to increase the amount of insert for the low DNA concentration. Lastly, uh, not sorry, not lastly, it's a fourth, the gel fragment extraction. So, for the ethidium bromide and UV radiation, will damage the double-stranded DNA and also cause the cloning rate reduce, positive rate decrease, and the mutation rate increase. So, suggest to you is we need to use the fresh buffer 
reduce the UV exposure time as shorter as you can. Use the long wave UV rather than short wave UV. And then we can using the different dye. So a good dye from transgene is the gel stain. So this table is showing the UV exposure will reduce the number of colony. So like by times go, by, go on in the UV. So you can see the colony forming from 3.4 10 power of 8 reduced to only less 1.6 10 power of 3. So the longer the time exposed, the shorter the reduce will be reduced many colony forming. And then for the blue white as well, the longer the time for the blue white, uh, the blue light, and then will also reduce the colony forming. And then you can see by using the long wavelength by blue light and compare two minutes in blue light and UV light, using the long blue long wavelength will have greater result. It's 10 power of 8 instead of using the UV light 10 power of 3. The colony forming, okay? And then the toxic gene. Background expression of the toxic gene will restrict the host growing. So what we can suggest is we need to choose the right vector, for example, top 10. Okay. These are the sharing on the cloning kit with you all. And beside, from transgene also have the expression vector for prokaryotic and eukaryotic. So thank you for today. That's all from my sharing.